Next, let's look at interactive render filters. What are interactive render filters? This is a really powerful feature in Katana that lets you make changes to your entire Katana recipe. To understand why this is useful, let's look at a few examples. Recall that we tweak some of the sampling parameters in the PRMAN global statements node in order to reduce our render time. This isn't unusual, and we often make such changes in order to iterate faster while we work. But this can be an issue in terms of the time taken to change different parameters every time you launch a render. And this also leaves plenty of room for user error, where it is possible to simply forget to change some parameters back when sending your renders to the farm. Katana takes care of this completely with interactive render filters. Let's go to our PRMAN global statements node and change some of the parameters back to what can be considered a medium quality. I'll set the pixel variance to 0.05, the min samples to 8, and matte samples to 512. Let's do a render so that we have something to compare to. Now, RenderMan's adaptive sampler will keep sampling the image until the pixel variance threshold is reached, but never exceeding the max sample set here. I'll have a much cleaner image now, but at the cost of render time. I don't want that, so let's see how interactive render filters can help. Press tab and type IRF. Choose interactive render filters. I will place this node at the top of my node network as interactive render filter nodes do not need to be connected to any node network. Set the edit flag on the interactive render filter node and click on the plus icon to add a new render filter. I'll use this filter to reduce sampling. So in the name parameter, I'll call this reduce sampling. The category is optional but it's a good practice to categorize your filters appropriately. I'll create a category called Render Quality. If you click on the Add Nodes widget, you can see that there is a large number of nodes that are also available in the tab menu that you can use here. You can use any combination of these nodes to create your filter, but in this case, I'm going to choose the PRMAN Global Statements node, which you can search for in the filter box. With the node created, I'll move the scroll bar towards the right to see more of the node's parameters and change some of the sampling parameters. I'll set the pixel variance to 0.1, min samples to 4, and the max samples to 16. At this point, we have created the filter, but it is not active yet. If you look at the menu bar, there's a clapboard icon with a cog wheel on it. This is the interactive render filters menu. Click on this to open the menu, and as you can see, there is a render quality category with the reduce sampling filter we created. To activate this filter, select the reduce sampling filter and double click on it. Or you can click on the add button to activate it as well. And as you can see, this filter is now visible in the active filters area. The clapboard icon has also turned yellow, indicating there are interactive render filters active. Let's do another preview render. Now, switch over to the catalog tab. I'll temporarily expand this tab to see more of its contents. If I right-click at the top of this tab, I'll be able to disable some of these categories that we won't be using at the moment. This way, we can make it a bit easier to read. I'm going to disable Layers, Comments, and ID for now. Let's rearrange the columns to make it more readable. If you look at the Interactive Render Filters column, you can see that the first render was rendered without any filters, and the second render has the interactive render filters that you use for this render listed here. The catalog also makes a record of the node this render was launched from and the time it took to render each image. And as you can see, using the interactive render filter saved us a lot of time in our second render. I'll press spacebar to exit the expanded catalog tab and let's go back to our interactive render filter node. Currently, we are rendering in full HD resolution and it isn't always necessary to see your renders in full resolution while we work. So I'm going to make a new render filter for this. I'll click on the plus icon again and I'll name this render filter half res and I'm going to make a new category called resolution. Click on add node and I'll add a render settings node. This isn't the ideal way to change the resolution and I'd normally use an op script to do this. As interactive render filters are usually shared between different shows, by using an op script, we can avoid hard coding the resolution values as the resolution can vary depending on the show. But for this course, let's go ahead with this basic method. I'll press spacebar to expand this tab, and in the width parameter, I'll type in 960 and 540 for the height. This is just 1920 divided by 2 and 1080 divided by 2, giving us 50% resolution of Full HD. 
Press spacebar to exit and now let's activate this new render filter. Click on the interactive render filter menu and you will see the new filter has been added under the resolution category. Double click this to activate the filter. Let's do another preview render. If you switch to the catalog tab and expand the interactive render filter column, you can see that this has been rendered with the new filter and the resolution has changed accordingly in the bounds column. Left clicking on any of the thumbnails in the catalog window allows you to switch between your previous renders. You can now work much faster and don't have to worry about manually changing the render quality or the resolution before your disk render. You can leave the interactive render filter in its active state and it would have no effect on your disk or farm render. So remember that you can create interactive render filters to change anything and these changes are completely ignored when doing a disk or farm render. In the next lesson, we will learn to share our work using live groups.